Hello there, everyone. Hi, boys and girls. You know, Uncle Dan, I've really been enjoying your series of stories on Paul. Do you have another one ready for us? I certainly do, Aunt Sue. And this one has been adapted from Acts, chapters 27 and 28 of the Bible. It's a really exciting story. So I'll just start right in on this episode, which I call... The Aged Paul. Shipwreck. Ship And they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion. At last, Paul, the aged apostle, was on his way to Rome, there to stand trial before the emperor, Nero. After a number of days at sea, Paul, with many other prisoners, landed at the port of Myra. Lying at anchor in Myra is a great cargo ship that will take the prisoners the remainder of the way to Italy. Down in the hold of that ship, two sailors are talking. Listen. I tell you, I don't like it. I wish I hadn't signed on for this voyage. <laughs> You're scared of a few prisoners? Scared of prisoners? No, of course not. I don't know what it is. Just a hunch, maybe. Anyway, we're going to get into trouble before this voyage is over. You see if we don't. <laughs> the captain will take all kinds of chances to get those prisoners to Rome before winter sets in. We're due for trouble. Lots of it. Oh, I think you're worried over nothing, matey. Ah, over 200 prisoners coming on board, and bad weather due any time now, and you say I worry over nothing. Uh, we'd better go topside and stand our watch, or we'll be prisoners too. Well, there they come now, matey. Over 200 prisoners, ready to start up the gangplank. Some of them are tough lookers. As soon as they get aboard, we'll shove off, I hope. Yeah, so do I. All right, you prisoners. Up the gang blank, single file. Hands over your head. Five, five. All right, men. We have a long, hard voyage ahead of us. All of your prisoners on your way to Rome. Just make yourself as comfortable as possible. I was very fortunate in finding this Alexandrian ship going to Italy. Otherwise, we might have had to stay here until spring. Now I'll deliver you safely in Rome before winter sets in. Yeah, to be put to death by Caesar! Yeah. Yeah. Fire! Fire! Oh, Another outbreak like that, and I'll have you all put in chains. I'm charged with your safe conduct to Rome, and I'll get you there, even if I have to get tough. Understand? Uh, so I will be ready as soon as we set sail. Take Captain, to get there. Well, it depends upon the winds. Five, ten days, who knows? So they set sail, but due to contrary winds, it took many, many days to get as far as Lycia, their first port of call. Much time was lost there, waiting for good sailing weather. Well, Julius, your troubles are over. We sail on the next high tide. That's about time. Isn't it dangerous to sail now, this close to winter? Dangerous? Well, the storms can be very bad this time of year. I thought you were in a hurry to get to Rome. Oh, I am, I am, but not at the risk of my life. And Paul said that if we sail now, much damage will be done to the ship, and our very lives will be in peril. I've come to respect his opinions. Who is Paul? One of the prisoners. What did this prisoner suggest we do about it? Remain here for the winter. Stay here? 276 prisoners and crew in this small place all winter. Fine, they'd starve before spring. Paul insists that it's dangerous to sail. I say we can get to Phoenice without trouble. We'll winter there. I bow to your superior wisdom, Captain. Taking advantage of favorable winds, they set sail and made good time. Soon they were sailing smoothly along the coast of Crete. 
Suddenly, a sailor, perched in the crow's nest high above the deck, called out, The south wind is changing to east by southeast. Yes, the wind had changed directions and steadily increased in velocity. Dark, ominous clouds gathered. Then, all at once, the storm broke in all its fury. Strike the sea! storm grew steadily worse. The big ship was tossed about on the angry waves like a piece of driftwood. Helmsman, give it a free hand! Let her drift with the sea! Aye, aye sir! Well, you sent for me, Captain? Yes, Julius. Step inside my cabin where we can talk and be heard. Yeah, this is better. How are your prisoners taking the storm? Well, they're not sailors, Captain. But surprisingly few of them are seasick. Uh, Paul is ministering to those who are sick. And Paul seems to be a useful man. He's trustworthy and dependable, too. He predicted that this voyage would end in disaster, remember? He was just guessing. He's a preacher, not a sailor. I know, sir. But I, I just can't get his words of warning out of my mind. Yes, sailor? Captain, sir, the port side of the hold has sprung a leak. Bad leak? Not yet, sir, but... Now plug the hole and reinforce the superstructure. Aye, aye, sir. The leak was repaired and the water pumped out of the hold. Yet the great ship creaked and groaned as the fierce gale continued all that day and the next. Then on the third day... All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Half of you men, man the pumps! The rest of you start throwing the cargo overboard! We must lighten the ship if we're to stay afloat! And when many days had gone... Still the storm showed no signs of letting up. All hope was gone that the ship would ever reach port. Down in the hold of the ship, the two sailors are talking. I told you this trip would end in disaster. You gotta die sometime, matey, so why worry? But I'm too young to die. No one is too young to die. <laughs> About to die and you laugh? Might as well laugh. Being sober and long-faced doesn't help matters. But there's no hope for us now. Well, there's life. There's always hope. Uh, you don't believe that? I don't believe anything. Uh -huh. Not even the gods? What gods? The gods. The gods. The gods of the sea, the storm, the waves. What do they have to do with us being saved from the angry sea? The gods can rescue us. The gods rescue us. Now, the gods can't even help themselves. They're nothing but wood and stone. Deaf. Lifeless. How can they rescue us? Matey, that sounds like you don't believe in the gods. I told you I don't believe in anything. Don't you believe that fasting like the captain ordered might help save us from the angry sea? Why? It'll save what little food there is on the ship, that's all. Boy, I'm hungry. So am I. I could eat a raw sandal. I wonder how much longer the captain's going to make us go without food. Probably until the gods are appeased so they stop churning up the sea. I don't take any stock in that god stuff. All hands on the far deck immediately! All hands on deck! Men, I ask you to assemble here on deck to listen to some sage advice from Paul. Who's Paul? Uh, search me. Here is Julius the Sangerian, in charge of Paul and the other prisoners on this ship. He will introduce Paul. Prisoner? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. And now, gentlemen, here is Paul. Why should we listen to a prisoner? We're free Roman citizens. You better keep quiet, my dear. You'll end up a prisoner, too. I'm a Roman citizen. I have the right to speak up against a prisoner. Who is this Paul, anyway, that we, free Romans, have to listen to him? I've known Paul for some time now, and I have complete confidence in him. I asked him to speak to you, and he's going to. All right, Paul. Captain, centurion, sailors, I bring you a message of good cheer. Not one of us will lose his life in this storm. The ship will be lost. But no lives. How does he know all that? Quiet. Last night, an angel of the God whom I serve 
appeared at my bedside and told me these things. Who is this god whom you serve? Ah, if you don't keep quiet, I'll have you cast in the brig. Told you you'd get into trouble. Uh, go ahead, Paul. There's nothing else to say, except even though this ship will be wrecked and we will be cast upon an island, we will suffer no loss of life. God promised that, and God never fails. So, men, I plead with you. Be of good cheer. Thank you, Paul. Dismissed, men. Come on, let's go back to our bunks and get some shut eye. Oh, not me. I'm going to stay up here for a while and watch the fun. Uh, yeah, I'll be down pretty soon. Are you asleep yet, matey? I'm too hungry to sleep. What took you so long? I was listening to the gossip of the men and watching their reactions to what Paul said. They believe what he said? Uh, some of them. Some of them don't. Do you? Believe there will be shipwrecked and not a single life lost in this storm? I should say I don't believe it. Yeah, Paul appears to be a man who knows what he's talking about. Just a bluff. A blowhard. A Jewish preacher trying to get attention. That's all he is. Captain said Paul's a Roman citizen. I don't believe it. And it must be true. Otherwise, Paul would not be going to Rome for trial. Only Romans can be tried by the emperor of Rome. I don't care what he is, Roman or not. He's still just a preacher. And I think anybody's crazy to take stock in anything he says. You know what I think? I think you're cynical. Ah, keep still, will you? I'm going to try and get some sleep. About midnight of the 14th day, the captain of the ship became fearful that in the darkness, the ship would be dashed against unseen rocks. He therefore gave the order to drop anchor. Toward morning, the two scheming sailors thought of a way to save their own lives. They would steal the ship's lifeboat and make their escape from the doomed vessel. We'll wait until daylight and then cast the lifeboat overboard before anyone realizes what we're up to. It's already beginning to get daylight. See the gray streaks over there in the east? Yeah, it is. And look, over there, there's land. What kind of land is it? Looks like a rough, rocky shore. The ship can never land anywhere along that coast. Our only hope is the lifeboat. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, let's get her overboard with them before the captain sees All us. All right, get set. Now, over she goes. Once more. Yeah, she's clear of the deck. Let her down in the water. Easy. No one will hear us. What's going on here? Uh, uh, nothing, sir. We've, uh, yeah, we're, we're just... Yeah, we just getting the lifeboat into position, uh, ready uh, to launch in case of emergency, sir. sir. Yeah. Well, thank you. Nice work, sailors. Uh, Captain, sir. Yes, Paul. I perceive, sir, that these men were getting ready to steal the lifeboat and try to make their escape. Hmm. Is that true, sailor? Well, we told you, sir, Unless that we were... these sailors remain on the ship, none of us will be saved from the storm. Centurion, Paul and the other prisoners are your responsibility. What do you suggest I do about these two sailors? Captain, sir, if I were in charge, I'd see to it that no one gets a chance to escape from the ship. Very well, Centurion. I charge you with that responsibility. Yes, sir. Sergeant, have your men cut that boat adrift immediately. Yes, sir. But, sir, that's the only lifeboat on the ship, and there's Get up out of you, sailor. You and your thieving buddy get below and stay there. Aye, yes, yes, sir. All right, Sergeant. Cut her adrift. Now the ship's captain had proclaimed a fast, thinking to appease the angry wind gods. Paul, ever concerned for the welfare of others, asked the captain to grant him permission to speak to all on board. Soldiers, sailors, and fellow prisoners, I have asked you to assemble here on deck that I might bring you words of encouragement. The God whom I serve and love has revealed to me that not one of us shall suffer death or even injury as a result of this storm. Yet the most critical hour is just before us. For many days we have been fasting. This is bad for the health of all. I shall now partake of food. I urge you to join me. See, in my hand is bread. 
After giving thanks to God, I shall break and eat it. O oh, Jehovah, great God of all creation, I thank thee for life and health. I now entreat thee to bless this bread, to strengthen us physically for whatever experience lies before us. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. Amen. As the darkness of the night gave way to early dawn, the captain discovered that he had dropped anchor some distance from a small island. Scanning the rocky shore, lined with its walled cliffs, he saw what appeared to be a recessed opening leading to a small beach or harbor. Perhaps, he thought, with good fortune attending his efforts, the boat could be steered into this more sheltered area away from the raging sea. Finally, in desperation, he headed the ship toward the island. All went well for a time as the great vessel cut its way through the storm-driven sea. Suddenly... Ahoy, everyone! Ahoy! The ship is running around! Yes, yes, sir. Are all your prisoners accounted for? Uh, I think so, Captain. Luckily, they were all assembled here on the forward deck. You'd better instruct your soldiers to kill all the prisoners. Kill the prisoners? But why? You know the law. If any of your prisoners escape, you'll pay with your life. You're right. Sergeant, what are the... Oh, no, no. I can't. I can't kill Paul. But he's innocent of any wrongdoing. Besides, he's been instrumental in so far saving every life aboard the ship. You've got to kill him, Centurion, and the other prisoners. Else you and your soldiers will pay the penalty with your lives. I don't think any of the prisoners will escape. They're bound to. Well, I'll have to take that chance. Sergeant, loose all the prisoners and tell them and the soldiers to jump in the sea and get to land the best way they can. All right, then. Every man for himself. Now it so happened that there was living on the island a barbarous tribe of people whose chief was one called Publius. In a castle-like dwelling high up on the cliff, Publius, with his ailing father and other members of his family, had been watching the distressed ship. When it appeared that the great boat was sinking, Publius quickly gathered a group of his men together on the narrow, sandy beach below. Well, men, it looks like the people on that ship, whoever they are, are doomed. Now that the ship is broken in two, there's nothing we can do to help them. Master Publius, look. The people on the ship are jumping in the water. They're going to swim ashore. Swim? In that sea? Better they remained on board and hope that the ship's still afloat after the storm is over. What? Why, it looks like every man on that ship is jumping overboard. Suicide, that's what it is. Publius! Publius, here comes a survivor from the wreck! A survivor? He must be nearly drowned. If we hurry, we may be able to revive him before he's completely drowned. There, sir, there he is. Only a few feet away now. Uh, so give me your hand, sailor. I'll pull you in. Come on. Uh, here, 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 here. Here, here, man. Help me lay this man out on the beach. I'm, I'm all right. Well, you must be a good swimmer, swimming ashore in these angry waves. No, sir. I'm not much of a sw swimmer at all. Here comes the Another one? Impossible! Here come two more! And here come five! Oh, I, I, I can't understand it. It's... it's a miracle. Yes, it was a miracle. Survivors by the score began to appear from the angry sea and scramble up on that narrow, sandy beach. Publius couldn't understand it. In all his years of experience around shipwrecks, storms, and the sea, he had never witnessed anything like this. Finally, he just gave up trying to understand it and sat down upon a nearby boulder. A short distance away, the captain of the wrecked ship is talking to the survivors. We will call the roll to determine how many, if any, failed to get ashore. First, I will call the roll of the ship's crew. Then Julius the Centurion will call the roll of his soldiers and prisoners. All right. Asa, Bim, Robo, 
Manassas Salama, Haven Zora, Eliab. Mr. Spokes wants you to come up to the castle right away. Well, what's happened? You look frightened. It's your father, sir. He insisted on getting up to watch the excitement, and then something happened to him, sir. Huh, well, I'll go up and see what's wrong with him. How, uh, how do you feel, Father? Uh, not so good, son. Do something <coughs> for him, Publius. Now, Please the, do something. The first thing we'll do is to close that window uh, so we can have quietness. No, no, don't close the window. I, I love the sound of the rain and the sea and the waves. I want to die listening to those sounds I've heard and loved all my life. Now, you're not going to die, Father. Uh, yes, I am, son. I'm old. I've lived my life. I just let me die in peace, listening to the roar of the sea and the wind. You go back to the beach, son, and help the survivors of that shipwreck. <laughs> Master Publius, sir, that's what's happened since you went up to the castle. Uh, more survivors? Yes, Master. Every single person got ashore from that ship. Every person? Are you sure? Yes, Master. They called the roll, and not one person was missing. Oh, a miracle. Then they built fires to dry out the survivors. And a snake, a poisonous snake, came out of the fire and bit an old man. And the old man died, so now there is one dead survivor. No, no, no Master. The old man didn't die. Everyone thought he would, but he didn't. And then he wasn't bitten by a poisonous snake? Yes, Master. Yes, he was, Master. The snake fastened itself right on the old man's hand, and he had to shake it loose. Then why didn't he die? I don't know, Master. But the people are saying it's because he is a god. Who's a god? The man or the snake? The man, Master. A god. Maybe he is at that. It would account for the miracle of everyone getting safely off that ship. Pardon me, sir. But they tell me that you are the chief of this island. I am. Uh, what can I do for you? Master, sir. My name is Paul, sir. I am Publius. My island and my people are at your disposal, sir. Master Publius, sir. Tanzo, I've told you repeatedly never to approach me when I'm talking to someone. But, Master, sir, this is the man I told you. But, Tanzo, will you be... What? what? Master, sir, this is the man who is God and cannot die when snakes bite him. Uh... Uh, are you a god, sir? No, Publius. I am not a god. The snake did bite you? It certainly did, sir. A poisonous snake? Deadly poisonous. And you didn't die? Well, hardly. <laughs> well, then you must be a god. No, Publius, I am not a god. But I am the representative of a god, the god of creation. The god of creation? I never heard of that god. Tell me about him. Delighted to, sir. Later... Right now, some of the survivors need attention. They must be taken in out of the weather immediately, or they may suffer dire results. You may use whatever buildings you wish to. Thank you. You're very kind. But you, you be my house guest at the castle, will you? Gladly, sir. As soon as I've taken care of the needs of the men. Uh, my servant, Tanzo, will be at your command. Now, use whatever buildings you wish. Now, when you're through, he will bring you up to the castle. Thank you very much, sir. And this is Mrs. Publius. How do you do, Mrs. Publius? Uh, dear, this is Paul. Do you happen to be the same Paul we've heard about up in Macedonia that, that claims he can prove that Jesus of Nazareth is a god? I am that Paul, Mrs. Publius. Oh, I've often wished I could talk to you, sir. And here you are in my own home. Now, uh, before we begin talking, I'd like to take you up to meet my aged father. He's very sick and may die at any moment. Perhaps Jesus of Nazareth can heal your father. Oh, is Jesus of Nazareth here? No, sir, but I am, and I am his representative. Jesus has given to all his true representatives the power to do marvelous things in his name. Lead me to your father. Oh, it's too late, I'm afraid. 
father has already lost consciousness. All things are possible through him who loved us so much that he died on the cross for us. Did your God die on a cross? His son Jesus did. He was crucified and died for our sins. But if he died, he's not a God. Gods can't die. Jesus was resurrected and came to life the third day. Oh. And that same Jesus can bring your father to full life and health. Most holy Father in heaven, in the name of thy son Jesus, I lay my hands on the head of this man and plead for the forgiveness of his sins, and if it be thy will, the healing of his body. He's opening his eyes. <sighs> Hello, everyone. How do you do, sir? Uh, who are you, and what are all you doing here in my bedroom? Father, you were very, very ill, and, and you were about to... Uh... Me? <laughs> Why, well, I never felt better since I was a child. He's healed. <laughs> well, he, he is healed. Oh. Your Jesus must be powerful, sir. Jesus yes. is powerful. He created all things, and by his might all things exist. What's all this talk about being sick and healed in Jesus? Father, you were sick. Hmm? You were about to die. This man here, he made you well. He, he healed you. Jesus of Nazareth healed you. Jesus of Nazareth? I say, is that the same Jesus whose star I saw moving in the heavens a, a long time ago? His star moved above the place he was born, yes. Over a manger at Bethlehem. Well, this is interesting. I, I'd like to hear more. Just as soon as I get up and dressed, I'd like to have you tell us more about this. Though Paul was a prisoner, he took every opportunity to show kindness to others and tell them of his love for Jesus. Holy Scripture says, And when Paul had healed the father of Publius, Others also in the island which had diseases came to Paul and were healed. And the people of the island honored Paul and his fellow shipmates. And when they departed from the island, they were given much things to take with them.